everyone. Today we delve deeper into the intricate layers of communication, exploring how it shapes our social realities. Join me as I venture through the lens of cultural and social perspectives in the realm of communication. So we've already unraveled the threads of linear communication and message construction. Now let's journey into a realm where communication isn't just about sending messages, but about constructing our very own perception of the world. Our third perspective takes a socio-cultural plunge. Picture this. Communication is a tapestry woven from sociology, social psychology, and anthropology. It's like looking at a complex mosaic of human interaction where every piece plays a vital role. So within this perspective, communication isn't just a tool, it's the motor that binds our cultural bricks. We share ideas, beliefs, and values, constantly shaping and reshaping our cultural landscape. Humans, we are social animals at heart. This perspective unveils how we thrive within groups, constantly adapting and interacting. Think of it as observing the delicate dance of a social symphony. Now let's zoom in on Newcomb's model. There's a person A, there's a person B, and their shared social environment represented by X. It's like an equation where every variable influences the outcome. Just like our everyday interactions, any changes in A, B, or X will have an impact on all three Let's see how that happens. Imagine A and B work at the same organization and meet over lunch every day and enjoy each other's company. Here X is the shared environment which is the office. Now let's say A leaves his job. The social equilibrium will be disrupted and maybe A and B will hang out after work and see each other. Hence, a new social equilibrium will be achieved. They will no longer be colleagues, they will be friends. But we can also imagine another scenario where Julia and Jane are friends who work in the same organization. Julia gets promoted to a senior role. Now, will they still be friends like before? You're right, a new social equilibrium will have to be achieved accommodating the changes in the environment. It's important to note that the shared environment can be in any form. Workplace, any groups you might belong to, or even a person. Let's try another example where Katie, Ben, and Tom are really old friends who spend a lot of time together. Ben and Katie, they get married and start spending a lot of time with each other now. So now either Tom will have to adjust to this new change or he will challenge it. Either way, social dynamics will reshape, illustrating the intricate balance of communication. So Newcomb emphasized that communication's primary function is balance, fostering equilibrium in our social systems. It's like the invincible glue that keeps our interactions harmonious. They explored, mediated individual mass and group communication, creating a tapestry of theories. But don't worry. We'll dive deeper in these theories in the videos to come. So far, we have explored three perspectives on communication. First, the linear transmission approach, where communication causes a specific effect. Then, the meaning-making perspective, focusing on constructing and interpreting messages. Last but not the least, the social reality angle, where communication creates reinforces or even deconstructs our cultural identity. Wrapping up, remember this, communication isn't just about words, it's the undercurrent shaping how we fit into the society, align with groups and even oppose others. Social constructionism is the cornerstone, reminding us that our words and actions weave the fabric of our social reality.